Hello everyone, this is Dr. Hauk with a discussion of the Module 3 assignment. Let's take it from the top. According to the blank, human healers are involved in a sort of spiritual tug-of-war with the ancestors over the souls of their patients. Well, that's the Kung. You read quite a bit on the Kung. That shouldn't have been too difficult. Uh, number two, the Mazatecs work with mushroom spirits. They're the ones who had that very interesting syncretism involving uh, Jesus and Christianity and mushrooms. So 2D. Number three, they are egalitarian, as was described, I think, by me in one of my videos. So 3A. Number four, B, Baba in Delhi from the Kinsley reading. And number five, that will be B. And that comes from, again, the Kinsley reading. So CDABB. Uh, 678. In 1835, that will be B. There was an influx of Haitian immigrants into New Orleans, which led to a popularization of let's call it the southern version of Voudon, which we call Voodoo. Number seven, Voudon is a mixture of African and Sea Catholicism. Uh, sorry, of African religion and Sea Catholicism. And that's quite evident if you've ever seen a genuine Voudon altar. Number eight, this Bokor referring here to Marcel Pierre, straight from the book, helped obtain, helped Davis obtain a sample of the zombie powder. So BCB for 678. True false. The introduction of Coca-Cola into Sub-Saharan Africa is an example of syncretism. Well, no, it wasn't blended with anything else, right? Syncretism involves blending of two disparate traits to form a new one. Now this is something that we would call acculturation, where a foreign idea is being introduced into a new area, but it's not syncretism, so false. Number 10, well that's false because otherwise it would contradict number 3 above, right? There's really not a strict gender ideology and there are not stark differences between men and women in Kung society, so that's false. Number 11, all Kung Shaman are thought to be equally capable. Well, no, that's not true, and you would have picked that up from your reading in the Kinsley book. They have varying levels of expertise and experience. Number 12, in Jamaica, mental illness is generally blamed on immoral behavior. We'll look at the, the Balm uh, Healing reading, and you will note that it's generally blamed on spirits, so that's false. And then number 13, uh, yes, that is the reason why we have things like balm healing and kumina, the so-called ancestor cult and things of that nature, alternative forms of religious expression, spirituality, and healing, uh, alternative meaning not westernized. So that's true. 13 is true. 14, that is also true. Unlike the Hollywood movies, People in Haiti have no fear of zombies. What people fear is becoming zombies. Number 15, the consumption of tetrodotoxin causes rigor mortis. That is false. In fact, that's a sort of a, a misunderstanding. Uh, it actually causes muscle impulses to shut down, which leads to a flaccidity in the muscles. So that the muscles become flaccid, not rigid. So that's false. 15 false. 16. According to ethnobiologists, the same psychoactive ingredient may cause different experiences cross-culturally. Yes, that is true. Think of the mushrooms. A person who accidentally ingests mushrooms in the American Northwest while camping versus someone using, let's call let's, let's say psilocybin mushrooms for spiritual reasons or for entertainment purposes, for that matter. Anyway, yes, that is true. 17, uh, no, quite quite clearly that is false, and, and that should 
be quite clear to you by now. Uh, number 18, no, we need more than the zombie powder. We need the magic and the power of the bokor, according to Haitians now, okay, according to Haitians. So we have two things going on. We have the magic and the power of the bokor, and we have the zombie powder. Okay, uh, Roman number three, fill in the blank, 19, curandero, C-U-R-A-N-D-E-R-O, or A, curandera, if you're referring to a female, 20 is divination, 21, jen, J-I-N-N, 22, pasach makan, that's the literal translation of that term, P-E-S-A-C-H, M-O-C-H-A-N, 23, Hanuman, H-A-N-U-M-A-N, the so-called monkey god in Hinduism. 24, Kumina, K-U-M-I-A-N-A, -A, sorry, one more time, K-U-M-I-N-A, Kumina. Okay, and then that comes from the extra reading on Jamaican culture that was assigned. And 25 is syncretism. You heard me discuss that earlier. Syncretism. Number 26, Datura Stramonium. D-A-T-U-R-A, -A, then S-T-R-A-M-O-N-I-U-M. -M. 27, the puffer fish. 28, the gross bon ange. That's what's left after you take the t-bon ange out of someone. You're just left with what they call a zombie of the flesh, just, just the body itself that's animated by something like a brain stem, right? The person's personality and so forth is gone. Anyway, for this, gross bon ange. It just means something like great big angel, uh, great or great good angel, or big good angel. G-R-O-S, B-O-N-A-N-G-E. 29, fugu, fugu. Number 30, Max Bouvois, straight from the book. And 31, also from the book, Bazango. Identification, an entheogen is a psychoactive substance that induces a mystical or spiritual experience. experience. So a psychoactive substance that induces a mystical or spiritual experience. For example, uh, Natima. You read about Natima. Pesci. This occurs in the Balaji Temple. So this comes from the Kinsley reading. It's basically a controlled stance. Uh, sorry. A controlled trance during which time the afflicting demon appears. So it can be confronted. Duppies. Ghosts in Jamaica. Uh, that are used in sorcery, they can cause sickness and other things. A brujo is a sorcerer in Central and South America. So it's just a term that's used down there for a sorcerer in Central and South America. And nigromancy, a Jamaican term for sorcery or negative magic. 37, the Tibon Ange, or the little good angel. That's the part of the human soul. Remember, there are two parts, the Gross Bon Ange and Tibon Ange in Haiti, the part of the human soul that is our personality and our ego. And it's what becomes an astral zombie if it's separated from the body. The Zombie Project, the Harvard Botanical Museum and the National Science Foundation sponsored this and they basically dispatched Davis to Haiti to do some work on this mysterious powder. The Calabar Hypothesis. This comes from Chapter 3. It was an early idea of Davis. Uh, he found Deuterostromonium in Haiti and West Africa, and he also found the antidote for Deuterostromonium in West Africa uh, that was made from the Calabar bean, and he assumed that he would find the same Calabar bean in Haiti and so he assumed that was all part of the zombification complex, but he was actually wrong on, on both counts. Uh, for one thing, deuterostromonium is not the important ingredient in the zombie powder, because tetrodotoxin is. And number two, the calabar beam is not found in Haiti. All right, the maroons, these are settlements of escaped slaves. That's it. 
41. How do Kung healers activate their healing powers? Well, uh, through dancing and jumping up and down and hyperventilating, uh, they do these things to agitate their numb so that they can then enter a state of Kia. The San Bushman healer in Botswana obtained his healing powers. One night while he slept, a white shape appeared and gave him a song that gave him power. That just comes right from the Kinsley reading. Uh, how does syncretism empower indigenous beliefs and practices? Well, it, it serves to legitimize indigenous beliefs. It gives them credibility. Right? The idea is that, hey, let's attach our indigenous beliefs that are not well known and that are local to something that is more widely known and has more popularity. And so therefore we can legitimize our own beliefs by associating them with these more legitimate uh, and more widely recognized beliefs. So, for example, consider the, the Mazatecs. They combine their mushroom ideology with the idea of Jesus and Christianity. So, something along those lines. The three reasons why boots and prets attack people straight from Kinsey. Number one, they're hungry and thirsty. Or number two, they seek to fulfill desires. And number three, they settle grudges and punish people in this way. Number 45... Some healing rituals in India are similar to the Shraddha ceremony. What is the logic behind this practice? Well, the Shraddha ceremony is a funereal ceremony. It ushers the dead onto the next, the next plane of existence, right? So the idea here is to take a demon that is still down here causing problems and to kind of, you know, respectfully usher them on to the next plane of existence. So that's the logic behind it. And thereby ridding yourself of the demon. 46. The purpose of the purification activities for patients that wish to visit the Balaji Temple. Well, for one thing, they want to induce Pesci. So exorcism can occur. That's, that's one reason. Also, they want to get the family to, quote-unquote, re-accept a patient back into the family. So the, you know, the, the, the patient will be reintegrated into the family. So those are a couple of reasons. Men are not effective healers in Jamaica because they're perceived to be violent, sexually aggressive, deceitful, and so forth. It has to do with the sort of gender characteristics assigned to males in Jamaica. Number 48, state the most important psychoactive ingredient in the zombie powder. Well, that's tetrodotoxin. Tetrodotoxin, T E T R O D O. T-O-X-I-N, and describe its psychoactive properties. Well, if you just look at pages 140 and 141, you'll find a nice review there. So uh, I suspect that's where you probably got your, your answer from. Number 49, uh, the function of the zombie complex is strictly social control. In other words, law and order. If you look at the list on page 312, you'll see it's a list of offenses. Uh, in fact, that many of which Clavius Narcisse was guilty of. So it keeps people in line. So it's a means of social control. Number 50, uh, the various factors. We have uh, seasonal fluctuation. It can fluctuate with the seasons. Uh, females are more important, so there's gender. Also, too, where the female is at in her reproductive cycle is important. It varies from fish to fish. Uh, it also varies from one population of pusher, puffer fish to another population, and then also between different species of puffer fish. So, uh, you know, I'm just looking for some of those, not necessarily all of them. And there may be one or two I, I left out. Number 51, it works by blocking nerve impulses, as I mentioned earlier, so it reduces muscles to a kind of flaccid state. Um, and, and another way you can s explain is that it blocks sodium channels and it sort of hampers the flow of sodium ions. Uh, anyway, so just something in the neighborhood is fine. Uh, number 52, the importance of gender 
in Jamaica. Well, women are, you know, quite quite opposed or, or, or quite differently from the way men are um, perceived in Jamaica. Women are perceived as being nurturing, uh, being sort of caring, peaceful, trustworthy, and so forth. Also, too, balm healing reflects mothering in Jamaican society. So, the healer is viewed as being sort of a mother and the patient is viewed as being sort of a child. So therefore, all of these characteristics associated with the female uh, are also associated with healers. And so there you go, something along those lines. And finally, the last one, there's been quite a few criticisms. I'll name a handful. I'll only ask you to choose two. And then I ask you to say something about what you think about uh, the criticism. Is there any merit to them? Well, here they are. First, there's the very dubious story of Clairvius Narcisse. There are certainly other explanations of his story other than accepting the fact that he was zombified. So that, and then, you know, you want to pursue that. Number two, fieldwork techniques. Some people uh, criticize Wade Davis for not knowing the language, not knowing the culture, of Haiti, also the fact that he paid some informants, so there were field work techniques that were critiqued. Uh, thirdly, as it turns out, the symptoms of tetrodotoxin tetrot poisoning really don't seem to equal what we see as the behavior of zombies. So there appeared to be sort of a, a, a disconnect there, so you can pursue that. Uh, four, it's highly doubtful that Bocors, in the field, working with primitive instruments, could administer the right amount of tetrodotoxin. In fact, it's even difficult in the laboratory. So what would happen is that either the amount that they would administer would be uh, so insignificant that it would cause no negative effects in the individual, or it could quite possibly kill them if they use too much. So, very, very difficult to do in the field with primitive instruments as Bokor, Bokors would be working with. So, that, that's an issue. So, the whole, in other words, the whole explanation of the making the zombie powder, the administration of zombie powder, seems to be doubtful for those reasons. And then number five, uh, there, was, there was the issue of the samples that Davis brought back. One testing found virtually no tetrodotoxin in any of the samples. Uh, another uh, laboratories seem to find some tetrodotoxin in one of the samples, but none in others. But anyway, well, there were some issues raised, though, after the <clears throat> samples were actually tested. And then, of course, I'd want you to comment whether or not you think there is any merit to whichever two of these you chose. Okay, thank you.